As I alluded to before, this is a big deal. Um, for a long time now, there's been a big distinction between the Wecom and the ACGM, and one of the most salient distinctions was that the Wecom had clearly stated learning outcomes and the ACGM, oh, did not, sadly. Sadly, uh, because we all recognize that statements of learning outcomes really are helpful in a lot of ways. You know, they help guide departments and individual faculty members. Uh, they help uh, uh, determine program outcomes, right? Course outcomes, plug in program outcomes. And also, especially when you're talking academic transfer, uh, you want to be sure. You, all of us, we collectively want to be sure that, you know, if students come and they take English 1301 at Amy's institution or Joe Carroll's institution or Jerry's institution, they should all get pretty much the same course. They should all achieve the same competencies and skills so that when they go on and they take sophomore level literature courses at some other institution or at a public university, we know that that student has the writing skills they need to succeed. So that's what the uh, learning outcomes are really all about. Uh, because we all know that for a long time, uh, universities, some universities, and some faculty at some universities have poo-pooed and decried the quality of instruction at two-year institutions. Oh, well, you know, glad you took that course there at Brazosport, but you know, it's really not as good as our calculus course, so we're going to have you take that course over again. And now that we have learning outcomes, we can, we can go through the list. Oh, really? Okay, well, which, student, which, which of these outcomes are students from Brazos Post College not consistently achieving? Now, there's something where we can actually drill down and we can discover, is this an unfounded rumor? Is it? Yes. Yes. There we go. Okay, we've settled the question. So we do hope that this will improve student transfer and student success uh, on, a, on a big picture scale. Process for course development. How do we go about doing this? Uh, first of all, we wanted to identify the courses that are most commonly used, right? Uh, when, and, and oddly enough, when, when I looked at the data, thank you, Julie Eklund, for providing that data, uh, the courses in the ACGM are like an inverted pyramid in, in, in that a very few number of courses, 20, 30, account for half the enrollment. That's you know English 1301 and 1302, college algebra, uh, government, the government and history sequences. Everybody takes these courses. They take them as dual credit. They take them at colleges. They take them at universities. So those were the obvious choices for us to pick, so that we could do the most good with the least work, right? Achieve the greatest ends with the least effort. Uh, we identified those courses, and then we go through and we solicit nominations from you folks and from the universities. We pick equal numbers of two-year and four-year faculty from that discipline. Then we, we staff and those faculty gather up fa uh, syllabi. So we'll get a bunch of two-year syllabi, we'll get a bunch of four-year syllabi, and the faculty go through and they compare. What are the common elements? Here are the common elements in the course descriptions. Here are the common elements in the learning outcomes. Then having done all that work, before they even meet, then we bring them together and they hash out those common elements. Okay, which of these have to be in there? Which of these things have to students have in order to succeed in a course? Uh, once they come to a consensus, they come up with draft materials. They draft, uh, they create basically a draft, an updated course description and statements of learning outcomes. Uh, and then we put those out for public comment. As we know that 12 people, you know, shouldn't just unilaterally decide the the structure of a course, we want to have wider input than that. So we send out something to all of you, your faculty give input, the four-year faculty give input. We combine all those comments together, we take them to the advisory committee. The advisory committee considers the work, they, they usually make a few editorial changes, particularly to uh, the learning outcome statements. They're very, uh, they're very careful that those statements be phrased in ways that are measurable. And we're lucky enough to have uh, one or two people there that have some expertise in assessment, and they give us uh, some good advice about that. Disciplines for 2011, things that we've already done, they're already in the ACGM. Uh, a bunch of the math, not every single math course, but all of the most commonly used ones. Statistics, college algebra, the calculus sequence, all of those have been done. English composition and English literature, that's all of your freshman comp courses, technical writing, and your sophomore literature courses. Uh, political science, 
Yes, that was controversial, but it's done. Let us say no more. Uh, history and economics, again, really popular, especially for dual credit, because they fulfill high school requirements and college requirements. These are the things that we just got finished doing. So these are the things that just got heard at the October ACGM meeting. Psychology, sociology, speech, Spanish philosophy, uh, a lot of the more uh, liberal arts and social sciences, because as you've noticed, we've already done a bunch of the math and the STEM and, and English and literature, so now we're doing some of these other areas. And the developmental stuff. The developmental stuff, I think, was, was ripe for some, some revision and some improvement, uh, and it's certainly very widely used. Results of the project, as already as I've discussed, in addition to the course description and the outcomes, well, since we've got these, you know, these faculty experts together, we figure, well, we ought to go ahead and ask them, hey, what's outdated? What's in the manual that just shouldn't be there anymore? And conversely, hey, what changes have you had in your field? What new courses need to be there due to those changes in the field? Here are your contacts for questions. Again, I've turned the AC gym over to my capable colleague, Rebecca. And if you have questions about this project in specific, there's my contact info as well.